Hey, welcome back Design Squad. And in today's actual video, I'm gonna show you how to pre-validate your forms and activate submit button. The request comes from one of the viewers, Emily, who is basically asking, hey, I'm able to validate my forms when I click uh, let's say create button or submit button. And when they check if the fields are, you know, pre-filled or not, how can, let's say I activate the submit button if, you know, the fields are all filled in. We can, you know, easily add a disabled state to a button and show it that it's disabled until everything in the form matches the criteria we want the users to fill in. And so that's easy to do. So let's jump right into it and I'll show you how it's done. First and foremost, just to keep you in a loop, here's some interesting bits. I have this join button for this simple form. And as you can see, I have a mouse over effect, mouse down effect, and I add a disabled effect. Now, if you don't know how to add these, just go to new interaction on your button and scroll down into style effects down below. And here's where you can define them. So I added disabled, but I didn't have any options. So I'm gonna maybe fill it with a color, which is maybe gonna be gray or maybe just lighter green, like so. So it's obviously disabled. Maybe I'm gonna set it to opacity. It's really up to you to how you want to define. There is a lot of different options here. You can also check the properties too. You know, so let's say this is a property for disabled. So that's actually technically disabled button. And so just showing that it's disabled and just click done. And that's about it. Now we're just gonna need to set it to disabled on the load because otherwise actually we're not gonna know that it's disabled. So I'm gonna go add new interaction to this page on page load and just set enable disable. And here I'm gonna select my CTA and just click disable like so. And if I preview, you're gonna see that it automatically set it to disable to the styling I had. So I can't do anything until I'm going to tell it to, hey, if these fields are filled in, please enable it so I can click join and create my account as a user, right? And so the next step is quite simple. Now we can, we actually always need a trigger to run the logic and to do some sort of actions, right? So the trigger could be that, let's say on typing or on focused or on text change or something like that, because we need to attach it to the input fields now if we don't have a button, right? So as you can see, I actually suggest you, let's say on text change, set something on lost focus, do something. I like to trigger the thing on text change, meaning every time people type, then I'm going to detect if it's a valid argument or if it's a valid value and then enable or disable our join thing. You could also say like when the focus is lost or you can add a delay and then enable it. But there is also going to be a tricky bit because you can just imagine as a user, I might do something like uh, I might enter my email. Don't spam me. Um, and then just some sort of password. And now here is where the trick is. So maybe when I am entering a password, I could select that, hey, the value is that and enable it. Or I could then the focus is lost. So meaning when I click out, I could also check and validate if the value is there. So maybe that's a way to do it because as you can see, my focused input fields are green. If it's out of focus, it's just out of focus, right? And so maybe that, that's something we can do. So I'm gonna definitely attach the field validation and join a uh, submit to a password because logically we can presume that their users are going to go through a flow of entering email address and then entering password and then clicking submit, right? So they would expect it in that order. Chances are there's going to be edge cases who are going to submit passwords, but they're total savages. You shouldn't use their test on them. They're just too weird and, you know, uncommon to use their test. Uh, jokes aside, though, I think it still makes sense to attach the validation to a password field or the last field in your form. You could do whatever you want, though. And so I'm going to just do this. I'm going to say on lost focus. Uh, you can then, you know, you can show and hide, which was suggested, but I don't really want to do that. I just want on lost focus. I'm going to tell it to simply enable our button. Boom right? 
But now the issue is that there is no real condition here, meaning I can just enter my email address, right? I can enter the password and every time I lose a focus, boom, it enables my button. But what if, let's say I delete it and lose a password, it still would enable my button. So it's not great, let me just show you that. So let's say I enter something, I go to password, lose focus and it enables even if it's empty. It's not ideal, right? So what we can do is actually go ahead and just add enable cases and add a condition or, or a logic case, basically an if statement saying if, let's say text on a widget, um, I haven't named the fields, damn amateur mistake, uh, email field, let me just name it really quickly and password field so you know exactly what I'm validating. So again, I'm gonna go back on lost focus, add the condition, uh, add logic on text field, um, let's say password field. If I say if it is alphanumeric, then do that. If it's not, it wouldn't run, simple as that. Um, and you can also validate if, if email field as well. So let's say you could also switch the if, uh, maybe it's a case two, and I'm just gonna say, also validate the email field that it is alpha numeric, and if it is, enable the case. You know, it, it could be one off, it could be both of them. So let's say I could just do one or the other, or I could just add it, you know, another row, and just say here, for example, email field is alphanumeric for, for whatever reason, let's say or let's say it's one off or alpha. It's it's up to you what you're uh, looking for, but that should do the trick. Simple rudimental validation, but let me show exactly what happens. I'm gonna hit preview. I'm gonna enter something. I'm gonna enter, enter a password. I'm gonna lose the focus and boom, my button became available. And now if I delete something from it and I'm gonna lose the focus, nothing happens because we enabled it. So we want maybe also to disable it if there is nothing. And so logically what I would want to add in this case is just a disabling option to automate the process. So let's say if we now delete something and it's not matching our criteria, let's disable it, right? So the easiest thing is just to copy that statement. And as you can see, it automatically prefills else if yada, yada, yada. Well, we don't need any of that because we're basically saying if it doesn't match the first criteria, let me just rename it to case two, let's say, we're just gonna disable it. So simple as that, it's not that, so it has to match and we enable it, or if it doesn't match, well, we disable it. Let me demo it so you know exactly what I mean by that. And so let's say this is my email address, whatever, my password, I lose focus, it becomes available. Now, if something changes, so let's say I delete that, it automatically disables it. It's simple as that. So maybe that's something you're looking for and maybe that's the trigger you're looking for. But again, I would go ahead and as always experiment with the input fields because you can attach a lot of different actions. Always think about the use cases you wanna to test to few users with your prototype of what you're looking for, what's the most likely scenario, what we're gonna take see exactly what makes sense for that case and then go from there. If you found this video useful, give a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so, share with your friends, leave a comment down below if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.